Have you ever encountered someone who seems to be the very definition of humility on the surface, but then hides a darker, more manipulative side beneath it all? Welcome to the world of covert narcissism. And we've done several videos on here, but I want to address it just in a couple other ways of helping you understand covert narcissism. Typically, what people think of is overt narcissism, like the grandiose, self-absorbed person that wants to be the center of attention. But what is actual covert narcissism and how is it actually messed with you mentally and emotionally, sometimes even more than the overtly abusive person in your life? So we want to be able to step into this world of covert narcissism to understand what it looks like, how it actually processes, some of the differences between the two as well. If you all are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness of narcissistic abuse. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations and your guide in the seven-day challenge called Escape Toxicity that you can access at escapetoxicity.com. If you haven't had a chance already, hit like, subscribe. If you're on the podcast, thanks so much. Rate a review and just share one of these episodes with someone who might be struggling with narcissism and not know exactly what it is. When we step into narcissistic personality disorder, there's nine different diagnostic traits. We're not going to dive into those today. We're going to do a video series on that next week. But today we're going to be stepping into how those traits actually look and appear when we talk through covert narcissism. So some of the traits of covert narcissism, we're talking about like the hidden mask. Covert narcissists are adept at adding and having this mask in their life hiding the world from who they actually are, trying to make sure that they appear and look a certain way. While covert nurses possess the same traits as overts, they're typically hidden and they're not as grandiose as the other parts. They're not looking like the abusive person in the middle of the room that's looking for all the attention, but they're just as damaging and oftentimes even more. Oftentimes it's more subtle and it's more confusing that leaves you more scared, more hopeless, and more crazy than what you thought you could ever be inside a relationship. Sometimes a a covert narcissist will seem super sensitive, oftentimes using cognitive empathy or sometimes feigning different emotions to try to appear or act a certain way that makes them fit into society better. Sometimes it's like the idea of like, I know I need to show sadness now because everybody else is, right? Like you might have the covert narcissist that really seems like they get it, like they get your pain, like they connect because you're like, oh, this is a nice person when in reality, there's manipulation hidden underneath. Sometimes the covert narcissist will appear like selfless, like giving of themselves, being like, hey, here's, here's time, here's energy, here's money, whatever it might be to be able to help you. Sometimes this will even look like communal narcissists of like serving and of of caring for people. But the whole idea with the covert is like hidden of like, hey, I want to look good. So they put up this mask. They can they they construct this image of like, this is who I am, this nice, wonderful person. And you start to fall in love with that. The problem is everybody else starts to fall in love with that, too. So that when you start to see the bad side of it and you start to see the actual person underneath, you seem like you're crazy. And sometimes that person might be like hiding all these things and underneath the surface, there's this strong sense of entitlement. There's this piece of like, hey, I still deserve what I deserve. I'm still better than you. I'm still holding on to these different things. There might be a hypersensitivity to criticism where you start to bring up something that might be a problem, might be an issue. And like, he's just all over that. He's defensive. He's mad. He's upset because he's hypersensitive to that aspect of you being critical. And there's a tendency a lot of times for a covert narcissist to play the victim. Now, this is hard. It's confusing because while you're the victim in the relationship, oftentimes the covert narcissist will come across trying to confuse and manipulate you. Oftentimes, like making you feel like you're crazy, like you're the one that there's a problem with. And it makes you wonder of like, am I actually the victim? Maybe he's actually the victim. And it goes back and forth. So this tendency to play the victim will confuse a lot of people there. So we move into some of the examples. And when we're talking through covert narcissism, some of the pieces, oftentimes it's like deceptive. And so sometimes you might have this piece of deceptive humility where you, he looks and he acts like he's being humble. He looks and he asks like, hey, he's being supportive. When in reality, he's not. Um, When in reality, he's fact finding. He's using your vulnerabilities against you. He's using different things to be able to destroy and put you down. Imagine you might have a partner who frequently portrays himself as supportive, listening, he's offering you a sympathetic ear when you need it. However, he starts using those, starts twisting your vulnerabilities against you, 
starts bringing things up in a belittling way, in a way that makes you get triggered, that, that gets you frustrated, making you feel like you're indebted for his kindness. And so oftentimes you'll see a narcissist that will serve you while you're sick or something like that, and then use that to be able to say like, well, you owe me because I did this for you. Like, I did this for you. Why would you not do this for me? All the while, a lot of times they'll avoid taking accountability for actions. Now, this is the same across the majority of narcissists, but with coverts, a lot of times it's just more subtle of like, let me avoid, sidestep some of the actions that I've done that have been abusive or hurtful so I can continue to get what I want and move forward in the way that I want. Again, it's still very self-centered, not self-love, but self-centered around the narcissist, around the mask, around what he wants in that moment. So just understand that that's typically the piece, the guys that it's coming through. Now, when we're talking through like covert narcissists, a lot of times you'll see different tactics that they use that are slightly different than overt or other narcissists out there. And there's a piece of manipulation that steps into this that is harder for a lot of people to see because it's so slow. Now, it's not this idea of like, oh, it just immediately switches. It typically is like a slow morph, a slow change. And oftentimes covert nurses are the relationships that people are stuck in the longest because you've been in this relationship for so long and it wasn't abusive when you started off. So like, why would you leave now? You've given all this time and energy and investment and it feels like it's not that bad, but in reality it is. A lot of times covert nurses will employ this range of subtle tactics just to maintain control over you, to maintain control over the narrative. Passive aggressiveness is huge, where he's saying things in a way that's passive aggressive to be able to get a reaction, to be able to get a response. You have to remember that supply for a narcissist is not always this positive, great, loving thing. It also can be a negative thing of you yelling, raging, getting upset. It's still giving him supply because you look like the crazy one and he doesn't. And so you're going to see this where narcissists will try to be passive aggressive to get the end result, to get a trigger, to get a reaction, to get a response, to get his own way. Sometimes this will move into guilt tripping, where he'll guilt trip you for the things you're doing. You'll feel guilty for going out with friends. You'll feel guilty for doing self-care. You'll feel guilty for spending time with the kids because you didn't do it with him. Okay, that's just about spending time, but a narcissist will employ guilt trips all over the place to try to make sure that you avoid all these pitfalls and as a result, stay on the path that he wants you to be on. Again, it's about this control, making sure that you're going the direction he wants you to go. Then it's also emotional manipulation. Like it's manipulating you and how you're showing up because he's not letting you actually experience your feelings, your emotions, your needs, your opinions. All those things don't seem to matter. So he's still putting you down and oftentimes gaslighting you, giving you a different perspective that's not based on reality. It's not based on truth. Think of it this way. Like he might continue to remind you of the sacrifices that he's made and uses your gratitude to manipulate your actions. Like oftentimes it's trying to manipulate you, how you're actually showing up, manipulate what's actually going on. Oftentimes these are covert narcissistic tactics that you're going to see. Then when we talk about covert versus overt, I've mentioned this a couple of times as far as like they're the same, but they're different. And I want to kind of break it down and unmask some of the differences between it. I think I've got one video that goes into this more in depth, but just be able to touch on this so you have an idea. Covert narcissists differ from the more overt in how it's just presented. It doesn't really differ internally. It's more of how it's presented. Overt narcissists oftentimes are boldly showing up, like their superiority, craving for attention. A lot of times you see more of like the overt range that happens from an overt narcissist. Coverts oftentimes prefer to just fly underneath the radar, oftentimes seeking validation through subtler means, looking like, hey, I'm the servant. And then you're like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. And the narcissist is like, mm -hmm, yeah, I know I am. Like, like they're doing it more subtly. Um, oftentimes, instead of having this overt rage, they'll have more of the simmering rage of the silent treatment or of like ghosting you or doing stuff that's more silent that makes you wonder, what did I do wrong? This all goes back to the emotional manipulation, the emotional game that a lot of times a covert narcissist is playing. Now, recognizing it is crucial to be able to know how to be able to work with both of these, but at the same time, they're still just abusive. Like it's still not helping you to move forward. So whether you define yours as an overt or a covert, and if you give them the label narcissist or not, it really doesn't matter. What matters is how is this person actually showing up in the relationship? Is it healthy? Is it not healthy? Is he demonstrating love, care, respect, honor, trust, faithfulness, loyalty, or not? 
And like when you're building a relationship that's on a bed of lies, you don't have a relationship. So if you're with a liar, just understand like that's not really a relationship. You're just waiting for the shoe to drop for this person to express another lie because he's not willing to be honest about himself. If you're ready to actually break free and move forward and you want to do that in an accelerated environment, go to rawmotivations.com, click on the one-on-one. I'd love to be able to talk to you and see how I can help you move forward. If you're ready just to take this step now, do the seven-day challenge. Escapetoxicity.com, seven-day challenge for $7 to have you understand what narcissism is, reactive abuse, how to start you down the process of healing so you actually can grow, heal, change, and develop you to become the person that you're called to be. Don't wait to change. Now, what I mean by that is like, don't wait till you know for sure, till you understand, like, let's start getting you knowledge and understanding now and get you plugged into a community that gets it. Inside the challenges that we run, you'll be involved with a community of people that are going through the challenge at the same time. Some ahead, some behind you, but going through at the same time nonetheless, and you get support, friendships, and connection from people that actually understand. So if you want that support, go to escapetoxicity.com or talk to me today at rawmotivations.com.